Bless the Lord, everybody. Can we stand oh, all yeah. over the building this morning? Oh, yeah. oh, Can yeah. we give him some praise this oh, morning yeah. all over the building? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's good to be in the house yeah, of the yeah. Lord. Can we give him some praise? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. With our hands lifted up, can we give him praise? Hallelujah! I love you. Come on, everybody. I love
this morning. Hallelujah this morning. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Our Redeemer. Our Redeemer lives. I said our Redeemer lives. I tell you God is getting ready to revive us from revival. How many of you are ready for revival? It begins in here. It begins in here. It starts in here. Revive us. Revive us on today, Lord. Revive us for revival. God bless you on this morning. So glad to be here. Come on, let's bless the Lord again. He's worthy. That's why we're That's why we lift him up. God. I don't know about you today, but I love him. Not only do I love him, but I want you to know I'm in love with him. I said I'm in love with the Lord. I'm in love with Jesus. Are you in love with Jesus on today? I bless him and I love him. Well, if you didn't want to know, I want you to know I'm saved, y'all. I'm saved. Sanctified. Filled with the Holy Ghost. And I speak in other tongues. Say, Glory to God. Glad to be in the number. Glad to be in the number. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just praise the Lord for being here on today. Praise God. Thank you for each and every one of you in your respective places. On today, praise God. We thank God for our pastor, our leaders, our over shepherd. Praise God. We thank God. Come on, come on and bless God. Yeah, come you. on, you can do better than that. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You know what? I got this little space right here. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to say this. You know, I thought about when the pandi- t- pandemic came in 20. I don't know. I'm sure some of you all thought about it too. When the uh, pandemic first began in 20, and you know, everything was just silent and still. You know, we didn't know what was happening and what was going on. All we knew that people was dying, praise God. But I thought about Pastor them and First Lady. They didn't miss a beat, y'all. We had the word, the word, the word, the word kept coming. The word, the word, the word kept coming. I thought about that, y'all. Every day, every day. They was trying to keep us together, y'all. They was trying to keep us focused. They was trying to let us know that this was not of God, that God had not left us. And I praise them. Come on and bless God for them. I love my leaders. And I praise God for them. I thank God for them. They did not miss a beat. And they're still not doing. And the word that we get from them is who for whosoever will receive it. Because the word that we get y'all is what? Life changing. But it's up to you. It's up to you. How bad do you want it? So I'm grateful. I'm grateful for our leaders. Praise God. Would it be too much if I said, come on, let's bless the Lord again for them? What, what, is that asking for too much? If we just show them how much we love them and we appreciate them. I thank God for them one today. Praise God. We're getting ready to read our scripture. Praise the Lord. Thanking God for everyone that's viewing us. Praise the Lord on Facebook or wherever you might be viewing us. Praise God on behalf of our leaders, our pastor, our bishop, Frank H. Stewart, and our lovely, praise God, First Lady Jacqueline White Stewart. We thank you for tuning in to Acts on this morning. We are Acts, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are Acts of God pay. Community Temple of Servants. Come on and clap your hands for that. Hallelujah. We are under the leadership of a powerful, a powerful ministry where we get what? Fresh bread, what? Daily, every day is right there for us. So we bless the Lord. And my scripture this morning is going to be coming from, mm, okay, it's going to be coming from Acts 16 and 25 through 28. I know we usually go to the songs, praise God, but this is what I got. Listen, 
Listen, Acts 15, I believe it is, yeah. Acts 16, 25 through 28. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. And the prisoners and the prison and, sh and the prison was shaken to its foundation. Every prisoner fell off. All the prison uh, chains fell off. The jailer woke up to see who had escaped. And he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, do I'm reading this from a different translation. Don't do it. We are all here. Look at somebody and say, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. We are all here. Don't you do it. Don't you give up. Don't you throw away the towel. We are all here. It's time for a jailbreak, y'all. It's time for a jailbreak. It's time for a healing, y'all. Nobody's sick, y'all. Hey, I'm going to be a part of that jailbreak. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We serve a good God. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good, God. All by yourself. All by yourself, God. You're faithful, God. You are a comforter. You are a healer. You are a provider, God. You are a way maker, oh God. Hey, God. God, 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 God. God, 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 yeah, God, God, Jesus, it oh Shandy, in the name of Jesus, God, now God, we just honor you for today, oh God, we thank you, Lord, that we're able to breathe in and breathe out, breathe in and breathe out, God, thank you, thank you for your breath, thank you for your breath that you gave us on this morning, God, thank you for life, God, thank you for a mind, God, to want to be in service on this morning, God, thank you for a sound mind God. Thank you God for what you're getting ready to done. Do thank you for what you've already done God. Thank you God. Thank you God. God you will deliver God and we will receive God. Oh God bless your people on today God. Bless your word is already blessed God. God we just honor you God. Oh God cause healing right now God is taking place if we just believe it. Deliver it. Deliver it is taking place right now if we only believe even now even now Lord we praise you God for the atmosphere in here oh God it oh Shandy we bless your name God and we give you praise God and God we just want to say God before I leave here God God we love you I love you God come on and give God some praise in Jesus name bless Jesus bless the Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus
read you a text on this morning to prove that our God, our God answers by fire. He's an all-consuming fire. He answers by prayer. And I praise him and I thank him and I give him glory. Oh, I'm going to read this text because some of y'all need to know that he is. He is I, he is I am. He is the great I am. Oh, glory. Now, some of you may have remembered. You may have been here. You may have viewed us and watched us via Facebook Live or YouTube. But we came together in prayer a couple of Sundays ago, petitioning God on the behalf of Elder Terrence Hargrove's nephew. Now on that Sunday, we joined forces and locked arms in prayer and we besought the God of heaven, the great I am, to come in and to miraculously heal that young man. Now on Monday, the following Monday, July the 19th, we got a, a text saying that you know, we know you're praying for this person. He says, but my nephew is awake. I was going to send the video, but he's in a rough shape. So I wanted to warn you before I sent it. So if it's okay, I will send the video to you. But to God be the glory, he's awake. When he sent us these pictures, I was in the video, I listened and I heard what was being said. But I heard something also in the background. So I texted Elder Hargrove and I said, listen, I'm not trying to be deep. I'm not trying to be super spiritual. But that young man needs all the help he can get right now. And we want to join and lock forces and arms together and pray. But we need some help on that end too. I said, turn that television off and turn it to the gospel channel so that his spirit can be receiving word as he's laying there in that bed in that hospital room. Because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. His word brings life. This young man needs life and he texts me back and he said, Auntie, he said, thank you so much. That was in my spirit and I didn't want to say nothing at the time. He said, but this is confirmation. I'm sending it to his parents right now. And they turned the television off and they turned it to the gospel station. And that young man, that was two Mondays ago. Can somebody say Monday? But then he texted us on Tuesday and he said, let me tell you what happened. He texted us on Tuesday and this is what he said. He said to us, Pastor and First Lady, he says, I want to tell you that this happened on Tuesday. Can, can you guys play that video? Do you got it? All right, guys, I'm recording this quickly. Hopefully I get no interruptions, but I have to share this. So I just came into the hospital, Jameer has started physical therapy today. Okay, like out the bed, physical therapy. The physical therapist just came out and said, ma'am, I have never seen anybody with the level of trauma and surgeries your son has endured on his first day of physical therapy. Get out the bed, pivot back and forth, stand on one leg after laying there for 34 days and having 13 surgeries. Okay, we talking about miracles, y'all. God is for real, for real. I am so excited. Thank you guys for your prayers. Our baby boy is coming home, y'all. He coming home. Come on and glorify the God of our salvation. Give him your best praise. Tell the Lord, thank you. The next picture, the next picture was him sitting up in the bed. He's sitting up in the bed and he said his first words. 
Shekaba. Woo, glory, glory. not the end of it. Listen to this. I'm about to send you what happened at the doctor's on Friday. Things just got a little hectic and I'll explain all that. But I wanted to share with you what happened. What happened on yesterday. First is the video with his mother that we just saw. He says, and then there's the picture that he took. He said he uses a whiteboard to write because he cannot talk with all the tubes that are in him. He said, and on the whiteboard he wrote, where are you? His mother sent and then them saying, your nephew is waiting on you. With that, I told him I'll be right there. He says, when I got to the hospital and walked in the room, he said, immediately he went to crying and he wrote on the whiteboard, he loved us and he missed us. We talked a while and he said he began to pray with them and they held hands. He said, the more they prayed, the stronger the grip got. The stronger they prayed, he said, the stronger the grip got and the tongues began to come. Sister Johnny, he said, the tongues start speaking. He said, until there was a gorilla grip on his hand. The young man gripped him so hard, so tight. Mother Baker, it reminded me of your grip. When he gripped him so tight, he said, the tongues began to flow. His heart rate began to elevate. He said, wait a minute, calm down. Calm down, your heart rate is going up. The machines are going to go off. The nurses came and ran to the room. They were speaking in tongues. They were praying in the Holy Ghost. And Shana, Elder Hargrove's wife, had to explain to the nurses and the doctors, this is the power of God on the young man. We took a picture of him with thumbs up. Hallelujah. If 
you can to God be the glory to God be the glory Ooh, hallelujah 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 we're excited we're delighted that you have come into the house of God on today we thank you for joining us via Facebook YouTube Acts TV however you have connected with us God bless you we thank you and we praise God for you now keep in mind that this is first Sunday and on third Sunday you can join us back in the sanctuary in both locations in Conway and North Little Rock 9 30 and 12 noon so join us right here in the presence of God God says when we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise when we're thankful unto him and bless his name it's then when we come into the sanctuary that God speaks God moves God heals God touches and he completely absolutely and totally delivers so we thank you for joining us you have prayer requests send them into WTE broadcast at gmail.com we love to connect and lock arms and pray for you taking you to the throne of grace now keep in mind today 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 somebody say today after morning worship we will have our back to school bash right here in North Little Rock come yes that's right put your hands together come on and praise God give God the glory free backpacks free school supplies free haircuts free 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 can you say free somebody hashtag that free somebody send up the loves and likes on today because on today God's gonna meet us here and meet the needs for our children they have many things planned food fun fellowship you don't want to miss it join us right here at Acts Ministries right after morning worship now the next voice that you hear the next voice that you hear please stand on your feet right now let's receive our pastor our leader teacher feeder in the person of suffragan bishop frank h stewart let's receive him right now put your hands and come on that's okay come on, come on, for somebody come on, come to come on. on for the man of god come on put your hands together and receive come on and him bless by the saying lord. amen Can we bless the lord today hallelujah hallelujah you may be seated amen this is this is young people day Amen. Come on, that's right. Put your hands. This is Young People Day. Sister Gwen, we have to tell ourselves, you can't have my family. You can't have my children. Amen. So God is good to us. It's happy time. It's time to bless the Lord in our giving. Amen. Time to bless the Lord in our giving. So prepare to give you can give electronically text to give 302-4242 simple give you can use giveify you can many of you have already mailed it some of you have dropped it off but this is young people day and we're going to be get behind the young people and we're going to we're going to Yes, we are. Amen. Minister Fletcher will be coming and delivering the word today on this Young People Day. Put your hands together. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we got to learn how to, we have to learn how to put our hands on these young people. When the first lady was talking, I thought about Brother Scotty. Little Scotty was in an accident. And he watched his friend die right in front of him. This young man was in an accident. His friend didn't come out of it. He had many, 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 many surgeries. They weren't expecting that to happen. They was going somewhere and expecting to be there. I'm telling you, parents, if you knew some of the predicaments that your children have been in, your prayer life was automatically increased. <laughs> I'm, rem I'm reminded of a father, one of, a father, one of the leaders here. His daughter began to tell him some of the things uh, that 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 she had done, and he said, "Don't tell me no more," because <laughs> we put ourselves in danger. We put our kids get in danger, and they get out of it. They don't realize it was the grace of God. It was prayer. 
And sometimes we don't realize we, they just like us. Think about all the things that we did. Our parents never knew about it. All right. Don't think they don't think they've changed and they're not. Come on. You got to learn to pray. And we got to learn really to go after our young people. So God wants us to do that. So thank God for the miracles. And even though Brother Scott is not here, Sister Valerie is here, let's remember those Cambrian kids. Amen. Brother Whitley is not here. Let's remember the twins. Let's remember them in a very special way. Let's not forget. Let's not forget in our prayers. Let's not forget our young people. Amen. Amen. God is good to us. Ask you to stand at this time. Get that device out or whatever you're going to give. Hallelujah. We're praying for all the bereaved families. We had three funerals yesterday. Praying for uh, the Nichols family. This is Felicia lost her mother. Sister Rita Wamba lost her nephew. It's a lot of senseless killing. Our young people, their, their life expectancy, the life expectancy of a black male in America. You might want to look that up if you got a black son. It's time for us to get real. It's time for us to go to God like we've never gone before. Amen. So we want to we want to get in a place where we're really going to go to God in prayer and petition him. Amen. And, and, and for our children, because they need to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Is that Fred across out there? <laughs> Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Ada, Brother Freddie, God bless you. God bless you. All right, lift up before the Lord now. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy, your grace, your love. We thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for the privilege you've given unto us to give. So we know that even when we give, Father, we give according to how you've blessed us. Give in proportion to how you have blessed us. And even then, we know you're going to multiply. So multiply the seeds for the sower to sow. And multiply all that is within us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May be seated. Hallelujah. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. If you're going to give electronically, you can be seated. But if you're not, somebody will come by and get, get your offering for you. Amen. As they get ready to move forward. Amen. Brother Fred Cross used to be one of my mentors. And, uh... Isn't that something? Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, clap right. your hands. What? We got to celebrate the healing of a young man. Come on. So y'all just stand up and clap your hands. Because God is good. I got joy in my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my but I'm singing all is well He's attacking every day But I'm watching while I pray No matter the attack I won't turn back This means war hey, Say this means This means war Say this me. This me more. Come on, clap your hands. Say this me. This me more. Yeah, stand on your feet. Say this me. This me more. And then this is what you do. I plead the blood. I plead. I plead the blood. Over my family. I plead. I plead the blood. I plead, 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 I plead,
hell to know that you cannot can't have my children can't have my grandchildren plead the blood Amen. Getting ready for the word of the Lord. Getting ready to hear what God will have to say to us today. We have to understand that. Hell need to know that. You can't have my family. The truth is, you never, if, you, if you never stop parenting, some of y'all have realized that now. You never stop. Parenting is not something you get to a place and you stop parenting. No, that doesn't happen. God never stopped parenting us. And I got four kids and they got some of the same crazy that I had in me and them. If y'all don't know that, then you've been deceived. So this is a pivotal day. It's a wonderful day that God has set aside for us to do ministry. So we get ready to bring the man of God before us. We many times do not understand when people stand behind the sacred desk what they're going through. We don't understand. It's a charge on your life where you minister the gospel under severe circumstances. It's important for that. Important that we understand that. Elder Hargrove came here and preached to us and he taught us and most of us never knew what was going on in his body. He stood behind his desk with incredible pain.
incredible pain from the cancer that has ravaged his body and trying to kill him. And we never knew it because when you have a charge on your life, come hell or high water, you got to preach the gospel. Minister Fletcher is coming to us today, just eulogized his wife, father yesterday. And the events of the week, great stress, things happening. We are human, we go through things. And sometimes we take it for granted the person that ministers to us that they're doing all right and everything is okay in their family. That's not the case. As many times I've preached in this pulpit and one and come waited, I was holding on to the pulpit to keep from falling. But when you know you have a charge on your life from God, charge I have. <laughs> Hallelujah. Want you to stand to your feet now. As we receive this man of God in prayer for him, his family, everything that's connected to him. The one thing we must understand that we can only be as great as the people that we pour into. We need to understand that the people that are coming behind us. We are here now because we're standing on somebody's shoulders. Absolutely. Should have put those hands together and receive Ella Fletcher at this time. Preach the word, son. Preach the word. Praise the Lord, everybody. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, come on and give God a great big hand praise. He is an ever-present help in a time of trouble. First, I want to just thank everybody for the cards and the love that y'all have shown Sister Mika and I in the loss of our father. She's at home resting. She wanted to come, but I told her the best thing for her to do is to rest today. Um, I also want to thank my father in the gospel, my mother in the gospel. <laughs> Pastor told me before things begin to spiral out of control in our family said uh, you're going to preach on first Sunday I said okay and I'm thinking maybe the day after and we'll say Rockladon the tornado start to come and things begin to spin and, and then on the other day he said you still preaching I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not a question. Not even a concern. Just being true to God's word and his faithfulness. When you realize it's not you, but it's the God that operates in you. So we have gotten those preliminaries out of the way. Now, I want every young person in the house to stand on your feet right now. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on. Stand on your feet, every young person. We got our young people in the house on today. Come on and stand, 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 stand where you are. God is good. We're slowly operating, slowly opening back up. Slowly getting back to, getting back to norm operations. You may be, may be seated. We're going to have a special prayer before we get out of here for our young people. I know it's a couple of weeks before some go back to school and some might be already getting ready to start. 
but we're going to touch and agree. And we're going to go back with what Sister Gwen says. We're going to tell the devil, let the devil know you can't have my family. You can't have my increase. When you look at your children, they are your increase. God placed the word in my spirit early this morning laying in the bed with Sister Tamika so y'all pray for me that this comes out to help and bless someone on today place it in my spirit and as I begin to kind of put it together in the book of Psalms chapter 27 verse 1 through 5 if you would it simply reads this the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh they stumbled and fell though a host should encamp against me my heart shall not fear the war should rise against me and this I and this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire where in his temple for in a time oh God of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret place in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set me upon a rock and if I could draw from one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I might dwell in the house of the Lord for a topic on this morning I want to use I got to get to the house I'm going to say it again I got to get to the house we are living in very troubled times church times where we're starting to lose a lot of our old moral values and sense of community When we look at the name of our church, a lot of us, especially young people, don't even know what ACT stands for. And maybe we might need to go back to saying the whole name. It simply is Agape Community Temple of Servants. Agape stands for love. Something that the world needs more now than anything else. Love, not just love, but unconditional love. The kind of love that loves through all pain, scars, hurts, and disappointments. He says, what shall separate us from the love of God? Nothing, because it is unconditional. We live in a time now where they use the word love so loosely that no one can stand on love. Tell me you love me one minute, the next minute you're cussing me out. Love. But we go past the word love, we got to look at community. And the power of this word community is lost in today's society. What happens to us when we lose our community? What happens to us when we lose our neighborhoods and they feel powerless in the face of global forces. I'm going to say it again. What happens when we lose our community? What happens to our neighborhoods when we feel powerless in the face of global forces? We are in a time now where we don't even understand community. When we grew up, those of us that's probably 40 and older, we played in the streets. 
play down the street. We had a sense of community. You wouldn't be caught doing nothing crazy down the street because you got a whooping down the street and when you got home, you got another whooping. A sense of community. It was a sense that no kid left behind. Y'all thought that just came today. But if you was down to Big Jerry's in them house and it was time to eat, everybody ate. It might have been beanies and weenies, but everybody ate. Might have been peanut butter sandwich, but everybody got a chance to eat. A sense of community. If I fell and hurt myself down the street, Miss Catherine would bandage up that knee and make sure I got home to get the help that I needed. I'm talking about a sense of community. I'm talking about agape community. Now I'll get to temple in a little bit. But what happens, it says, we, who do we become when we lose our community? The argument is that the disempowerment of our communities is responsible for a whole host of problems. Let me say it again. The argument is that the disempowerment of our communities serves as a whole host of problems in the world today. Let me give you a few examples. Inequality. Racism. Drug crisis. And perhaps the most troubling of them all, the rise of nationalism. When we lose the sense of community. It was an old saying that said it takes a village to raise a child. But what happens to the child when the village is gone? And we see this more and more today. Young people killing each other because there's no sense of community. What happens to the child when the village is gone? You should go to school. <laughs> they call it corporal punishment now. We call it a paddle on the backside. And a whole lot of us would took that, would rather took that paddling than to get home and let mama know, our daddy know, we was in trouble. You know, I ain't never been no bigger than what I really is right now. So I would slide paper down in my pockets, brother Stewart, Sturgis. Because I knew I was getting ready to get them licks from Mr. Mathis or Mr. Wise. And I remember one time I had five of them. And y'all say five, but five from a big man was a whole lot. But I'd rather take those five licks from him. And he was about 280 pounds, six foot tall, than take them from my mama who stood about five foot. But it was a sense of community. Now, let one of these teachers lay hands on little Johnny. And we're going to make the news, CNN, CBS, and 60 Minutes. But we need to get back to that sense of community. Nationalism is just a way of thinking that says some groups of people should be free to rule themselves. We saw this when they begin to try to take over the White House. I got more power than the national government. I'm going to do what I want to do. Simply because we're losing our God, our sense of community. So many people are divorcing themselves from community. Let me say it again. So many people 
are divorcing themselves from community. Another word we use so lightly, divorce. So quick to get a divorce. Not understanding that it affects so many other areas of our lives. The concern is that if we continue to divorce our communities, our communities continue to die, this will lead to a life of loneliness. Let me say it again. If we continue to go the way we are going, church, in our communities, it leads to a life of loneliness, which we are seeing become, uh, should I say like this, which we are seeing is becoming a deep social problem in the world today. Loneliness, depression, mental anxiety, suicide rate. All these things are happening right now because folk are losing their sense of community and finding themselves all alone and lonely. Loneliness can be a horrible thing. And we see that now especially during this time of pandemic. I can't speak for everybody, but in the midst of the pandemic, I, I started to lose some loved ones and I started to find myself alone through isolation because I couldn't get out and do some of the things I wanted to do and my anxiety started to go through the roof. Started to wrestle with some stuff. Started to get a little bit irritable. Started to feel lonely and nobody seemed to care. A sense of loneliness. There was a time when you could not be isolated, Sister Johnny, because somebody was going to come check on you. They was going to bring you some soup, some bread, some chicken or something over to the house. I ain't seen you in a couple of days. Your phone ain't rang in a couple of days. I need to come check on you, Brother Evan. But we live in a time now where we don't want to check on nobody because we don't want to offend nobody. So we're sitting there watching folk die because we're losing our sense of community. I hope y'all hear me this morning. Hmm. The Bible says, eh, are you? Uh, he asks, am I my brother's keeper? Yes, you are. And let me tell you right through here, through the times that Sister Meek and I have been going through, I thank God for people checking on us. Whether I want you to check on me or not check on me. Whether I respond to you or not check on me. Whether I respond on today or tomorrow, please check on me. Don't leave me alone. Don't let me start to get in my mind because the mind starts to play tricks on you when you're alone. Oh, God, help me. Oh, God, we have some problems, church, that we got to deal with. Look at somebody and say, I got to get back to the house. I got to get in the house. These days, these days, create, creating a sense of community, our family, is pretty hard. Let me say it again. In these days, creating a sense of community, our family, are pretty hard. Everyone is so busy. Everyone is so tired. There's a, there's a lot of really lonely people around us. Let me say it again. Everybody's so busy. Everybody got their own agenda that we find ourselves dealing with a lot of lonely people and you wonder why they snapping at you because they've been alone. Their mind been playing tricks on you. Have you been sick during the pandemic and nobody checked on you? Have you been going through a spell during this pandemic where nobody really checked on you? You needed the church to stand up, but the church was going to sleep. It's high time for us to wake up out of our sleep right through here. Oh God, I feel like preaching right about now. We got to get to a place now where we begin to learn how to get our sense of community back again. I might offend you. I might mess you up. You might get mad at me. But know this one thing. I'm coming out of love. And if love is connected to it, love will win in the end. Oh God, I feel like preaching. So I got to get my sense of community back. Hold on, Brother Evan. I'm trying to pace myself. Oh God, when you look at this right here, there are a lot of real lonely people 
Yet God has a plan for his family and that plan is called the church. Let me say it again. There's a lot of lonely people out here, but God has a plan for his family and that plan is simply called the church. The church got to stand up right through here. We got to get better doing church right in the midst of a pandemic, right before we get ready to open back up. You got to ask yourself, what am I doing to get the church better? Because the church is made up of you and I. It's some things we got to do better. When was the last time you checked on somebody? When was the last time you picked up that phone and sent them a text and just said, I love you? These three words, I love you, mean a whole lot. We got to do better. Sadly, a lot of people attend church with the right attentions. They go to worship God, to hear his word pro proclaimed. And to be a part of a family. And when I heard Sister Tina singing that song. I am God. It brought back some memories back in the Little Red Church. Before we had all these gadgets and things. We didn't have a whole bunch of mics. Had a little raggedy drum set, one keyboard. But we came in and we wasn't trying to perfect anything. We were just coming to try to lift up the name of the Lord. Didn't have all the other stuff. Matter of fact, didn't have these nice clothes. Wasn't sometimes the air didn't even work in the church. It got hot up in the church. But it was a sense of community in the church. Because that was before the church was even, the name was even changed. It was Agape Community Church. It's something about having a sense of community. We were one big family. Yes, we made each other mad, but we could make each other mad on Monday, but come around on Tuesday, because I think we was having Bible class Tuesday and Thursday, or something like that. But whatever it was, I know we had it two days a week. It might have been Wednesday and Friday, whatever it was. But you can make somebody mad, but then you say, wait a minute, my car broke down. You remember them days, Tina? Car broke down. And you say, wait a minute, I made Tina mad last week, but I need a ride to church, because one thing was for sure. I had to get to the house. I don't care how mad I made you. I don't care what I was going through. I don't care what we look like, but we had to get to church, and it's all that mattered. I'm talking about getting to the house. So when you look at this, we got to get to a place back where we have the right intentions, the intention to come to worship and praise God and to hear his word proclaimed. But the problem is right here, but they don't get uh should i put it like that but they don't ever experience that place where they find love and are loved i got to slow down i'm coming to find family i'm coming to show love simply because i want to be loved not looked at not criticized, not critiqued, not trying to fit in, but can I just be me? One thing about it, when I came to Agape Church, oh, back in the 90s, I had an earring, Brother Avery. Had me little bob, had some, y'all, young people, Brother James had some hair. I had a little hair on my head, and I came in there, and then when the, 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 a lot of people didn't know I was looking at 10 to 40 in the state penitentiary when I walked into the church, but nobody judged me. I had that earring in my ear. Pastor just told me, let leave that boy alone, let that earring stay up in there. And all of a sudden, love called that to change. They just loved on me. Met me where I was. It's something about when you come and you want to be loved and you can show love. When we look at this, you also want to be supported. I just want to come to a place where I'm supported and I can show support. I want to come to a place where I can be cared for and show care. I'm talking about the church. There's some basic principles that we got to get back together because we're trying to get back to community. Can you love me like I love you? Can you care for me like I want to care for you? Can you support me like I want to support you? I might not walk like you. Might not talk like you. Might not have your degree. But look at me right now. I'm in the same place you in. We are under one roof and we family. Look at somebody say we family. We family and we all we got. We are a God -bay community temple of service. Whoa God hold that thing. I'm going to preach today Evan but give me a minute. When you look at this right here I just want to be cared for. I just want to show love and be loved. I just want to be supported and show support. We can come to church with a lack of commitment 
and a sense of judgment. I'm going to hit all of it today. Come with a lack of commitment and a sense of judgment. Guilty. I'm going to say it right here, guilty. Come in sometimes judging folk. Some men come time, sometimes you judging folk that's committed and you ain't committed. We got to look at ourselves and do a self-evaluation before the church, before the church open back up. Because I'm getting ready to go somewhere. When we come to church with a lack of commitment and a sense of judgment, then we wonder why the church don't feel like community or family. Let me say it again. We coming up in here with a, oh God, a lack of commitment and a sense of judgment. And talking about the church ain't the same. When the church ain't the same same because your attitude ain't the same you got to tell yourself I got to have an attitude adjustment the Bible lets us know be transformed by the renewing of your mind there's some things I got to change in me in order for everything to get back to where it was matter of fact I don't want it back to where it was because he said the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former look at somebody and tell them I just want to get my mind right it's a challenge oh God it's a challenge oh Oh God, it's a challenge to do church. God desire, oh God, God, it's a challenge to do church. God desire is for us to flourish in the house of the Lord. Let me say it again, it's a challenge, baby. It's a challenge to, to do church because I'm dealing with all kind of personalities. I'm dealing with all kind of folk. But when I look back over my life, I can remember being down the street, playing in the street, doing everything I wanted to do because it was a sense of community. And we can never get the agape house back to a sense of community. Yes, it's a challenge, but it's all worth it. I got work to do. Slap your neighbor and tell him I got work to do. I got some work to do. I got to get my mind back right because I want it to flourish, Sister Way Up. It's got to flourish. And to flourish simply means to grow well, to be happy, to be healthy, and to be successful. I don't know about you, but I want to glory. I want to flourish in my latter years. He told me I'm going to flourish in my latter years. It's got to be some things that's going to happen in order for us to flourish at a church. We got to do ourselves right. Look at somebody and say, I got to get back to the house. I got to get back to the house of the Lord. The Bible says it like this in the book of Psalms. Come on, brother Evan, we getting ready to go up out of here. He said it says it like this in the book of Psalms. He says, there's one thing I have desired that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. But then he goes on and says, I want to inquire in his temple. I don't know about you, but right through here, I got some things I need to ask God. I got a few questions, if you mind. I got some questions. Lost some loved ones. Had some hurts. Had some pains. Money has gotten funny. I got a few questions I need to ask God. Anybody want to inquire in his temple? Do you got a few questions? God, I need your help right now. I don't need to ask you. I don't need to ask you. I need to labor for him and ask God. God, help me right through here. I need your help. And if you don't help me, I won't make it. I got a few problems. Problems with my children. Problems in my marriage. Problems over here. Problems over there. But how many know he's a problem solver? He's a way maker. I got to get back to the house. I feel like preaching this morning. Lord, help me right through here. I just got to inquire. But sometimes about it, when you begin to inquire of the Lord, it says right here, you got a few questions. Lord, why? Lord, how? And Lord, when? Lord, why this got to happen to me? Lord, how could you allow this to happen? And Lord, when you going to bring me out? I see everybody else walking around here with power and anointing, and I'm struggling. Oh, God, but when you begin to inquire of the Lord, it turns on you like it did Jeremiah. Jeremiah said it like this. Jeremiah says, because of the Lord's mercies, that we're not consumed. They are new every morning. But Jeremiah would have never came to that consumption if he wouldn't have been inquiring of the Lord. He began to ask God some questions. He said, remember in my afflictions, the wormwood and the gal. My heart almost gave up. I almost quit. But I remembered one thing. It's because of the Lord's mercies. I'm not consumed. Great. I said, great is his faithfulness. Look at somebody say, I got to get back to the house. I got to get back to the house. And when you look at this right here, why are we not consumed? 
You got to ask your question, why am I not consumed? Why am I not consumed? Because he goes on to say, in the time of trouble, he will hide me. Have God ever hid you? Have he ever hid you in the church? I was high. He hid me, hid me in the church. I was almost about to quit, Sister Kim. Matter of fact, I gave up, but God hid me in the house. He protected me. He covered me. Look at somebody and say, it's in the house where God I can hide me. I got to get back to the house. I got to get to the house. Hide me, Lord. My mind's going crazy. Hide me, Lord. I made some mistakes. Hide me, Lord. Oh, God, hide me. Woo! Hey, 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 hey. We need community. Can I come to the church and hide in the church, Sister Margaret? Can I come in and hide? Oh, do I got to worry about you judging me? Do I got to worry about you talking about what's wrong with that boy? I can remember one of my favorite scriptures were, oh God, I want to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. And I would lay up under the pew. And I remember Sister Phyllis walking by, said that boy still quoting them scriptures. But I just wanted to know God. And every time I would quote it, it seemed like all oh, hell would break loose in my life. But I kept on quoting it because I wanted to know him. Matter of fact, I still quote it today. And that might be why I'm going through some stuff. Because I just want to know him. I want to be in the house. I got to get in the house. There's joy in the house. There's power in the house. Oh, God. Give me about five more minutes and we're going to close this thing out. I'm talking about a sense of community. A sense of community. And when we look at the sense of community, I'm going to close it out with this one first, lady. I can remember as a young man, I talked about playing in the street. We would all be playing in the street, Sister Potter. And we'd be playing and playing and playing, having a good time in the community, down the street, around the corner. But one thing let us know, we had to get in the house. That's when the street lights came on. When the street lights begin to come on, see the children don't know nothing about that. They don't know nothing about that nowadays because they're in the house locked up on the iPads locked up on the TV they don't even know what community is don't know how to play in the streets but when the street lights came on we began to run home it wasn't a question made it wasn't anything made oh God if one person took off running we knew the street lights came was coming on and the thing about it was they all didn't come on at the same time matter of fact one started up the street that one kicked on and other kicked on the main thing was I had to be home before all the street lights came on. And when you look at this right here, the street lights coming on was an indicator that darkness was coming. Let me say it again. When the street lights came on, there was an indicator that darkness was coming. Look at somebody say, we're living in some dark days. Darkness all around us. What is your indicator? What street light is coming on in your life? What is telling you it's getting dark? It's getting dark, baby. It's time to go home. I can't speak for everybody in here, but it's getting dark. Do you got some trouble? Do you got some surf stuff? Do you got some stuff going on in your life that's indicating to you that it's getting dark? It's getting dark, baby. But I'm getting ready to get to the house because I know if I get to the house, I got help in the house. I got power in the house. I got anointing in the house. I got healing in the house. I got joy in the house. Look at some as I got to get to the house and the main thing that's at the house is dad is at the house if I get to the house dad is at the house and he said I ain't gonna let nobody nothing nothing destroy you I can't speak for everybody brother Vernon but the street lights coming on and it's time for me to get to the house I'm on my way to the house right now cause I need it I need to get on the I need to get on the altar. I need to get in a place where my healing comes. I need to get in a place where my... Gotta get to the house, Sister Tina. I gotta get to the house. The street lights are an indicator that it's starting to get dark. Whoa! What street lights coming on in your community? We are killing our kids because we're losing community. This 
biblical, y'all. He says, when you pass through, he said, I need you to grab some rocks and build a memorial. So when the kids see this, they begin to ask, what is that? Because he knew it was going to be a time where they need to ask some questions. I got to close. But see, If it had not been for the house of the Lord, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here right now. My marriage wouldn't have made. The significance of the house, and we try to downplay it, but we're killing our kids. Church was our everything. Now we done got old and we said don't take all that but you can remember a time in your life if you didn't have that community if you didn't have that church if you didn't have that sense of family you wouldn't have made it. yeah we made some mistakes yeah, we might have went too far overboard. But it still does not take away from the fact I needed to be in the house. And we live in darker days than we lived in then. You cannot downplay the significance of community because when you lose community, you lose church. And if we lose that, where would our children be? I know we say if it had not been for the Lord. But our connection with the Lord was in the house. And we live in a time now where folks say, I just look at it on social media and I, I look at it on this and I, I look at it on YouTube and I look at but it was something about being in the presence of the Lord. I got to get to the house. Street lights coming on, y'all. It's getting dark. And if you don't get home before the last street light get on, you was in trouble. I don't know how mama and dad and them knew. Because they was in the house. And a lot of times they didn't know. We told off on ourselves. It's getting dark. Street lights are coming on. We need to pass something down to our children. That's the need for the house of God. And if it's not where we want it to be, it's left up to us to change. One thing I have a desire, and that will I seek after the Lord, that I might dwell, that I might live, that I might inhabit in his temple. If we don't pass this down, the need of the house of God to our children. Can't say that. But why I can say this, we're in trouble. Let's put it like that, we're in trouble. It's left up to us to change. We go to work, folk offend us at work. We still go to work. Because we say we got to pay them bills. And 
what's crazy is a lot of times we go into work because we're comfortable with all the mess that go on at work. Can change your job right now. You got enough credentials. You got enough stuff on your resume to change and make more money and put yourself in a better situation. But you familiar with the mess. But you can't come to the house. Because there's stuff going on in the house. I'm judging. All of us guilty. From the pulpit to the door. Because we all here. I'm getting ready to close, but there is a sense of urgency in the atmosphere. We need to get back in the house. Not just physically, but mentally and spiritually. And let me tell you this right now. It's going to be a fight. It's going to be a war to get back in the house. Every distraction Folk looking at you. Folk ask you to sit in another seat. Folk might start, we, we might get to a place where we have to ask you to come on first and third Sunday. Well, other folk come on second and fourth. And you'll get mad and say, I ain't gonna come. But when you do that, you're destroying the next generation. It hit in my spirit this morning more than anything. If we don't fix some stuff now, we're going to kill our kids. We're going to kill them. Big mama drug us to church. Grandmama drug me to church. Sung in the choir, and if I was at that chewing gum, she came out the choir, popped me upside my head, took the gum out of my mouth, and went back to singing. But I was going to be in church every Sunday morning. And if it wasn't for her dragging me to the house of God, I wouldn't be here today. It's that important. I got to get to the house. I got to get to the house. Not just me, Sister Kim, but everything that's connected to me. Got to get to the house. I'm closing. I'm done. But maybe, just maybe, we might need to go back to Agape Community Temple of Service. Instead of just saying acts. Because every word in that means something very important. Unconditional love. Community. Temple, the house of God. That we come to serve. And we got it out there on the mission board. But we need to reiterate what I say, reiterate that over and over to our kids. Unconditional love, a sense of community. Where we come to the temple to get strength to go out as servants to do God's will. I gotta get to the house. Come on, Brother Vernon. This time I want every Minister Avery and I'm going to step out the way. I want every young person every young person that's in here today how can I do this? 
I want you to come down. They're going to anoint you. and You can go back and sit, sit down. Because they might have too many to gather up at the front. But they'll come down and anoint you. You come down and anoint you. And our pastor's going to pray a prayer of faith. None feeble amongst us. None sick. I got any more ministers in the house. Come help minister Avery and anoint them with oil as they come. Come on, Pastor. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. Come on, come on, come on. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Make sure we get the ones in the back. That's right, Javon. Nothing else Make sure we will get everyone. do. I just want you. Hallelujah. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. I just want you. Hallelujah. I just want you. Hallelujah. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Everybody standing. Nothing else. Get ready to pray. Nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Listen, brothers and sisters, that we get ready to pray. Every parent in the building, give me a little bit more on the monitors. So we're getting ready to pray. Now, I, 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 I ran off and left all that oil at home. I was getting about a hundred and have blessed that but we only have very few now if you got something to last you the next week we'll, we'll we'll bring it all on the altar we'll have about a hundred but if you got enough to last that's fine if not we'll let you we'll let you get some oil how many need something to start okay uh Vandale, come here quickly you're on that side we can go as far as we can go. So, Johnny, can you do that on this side? Thank you. And I have enough. Well, I ain't looking at I have enough. I got plenty, and we got plenty. If you're not going to be here next week, or we want you to. We need to get across this one. Do they need one? They do. I got a whole bunch. I just, I don't know what I was thinking about. I ran off and left it. I know what I was thinking. How's the car? We take that back to the crosses. I need one of those for him too. I need a whole gallon of oil. Listen to me real quick, carefully. Listen to me real carefully, and I'm gonna be done. Are you listening? Look at somebody. Are you listening? Because I want you to hear this. We must understand. We must believe in science. We we understand that God created science. All the scientific polls say this. The loneliest generation in the history of the planet is Generation Z. Generation Z is college on down. The loneliest generation in the history of this country 
Now, you got to ask yourself, how can you have TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, television, YouTube, and they're the loneliest generation in the history of this planet? That's why the suicide rate is going up. Send it home playing a game of isolated them. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. We don't do something. I'm telling you. The loneliest generation is what it's, it's them with all these pads. Why are they lonely? There's a reason for it. The interaction with God, interaction with us. They're lonely. And when you're lonely, you do crazy stuff. When you're lonely, you experiment. You got to hear that. And they got all the stuff we've given them. And they dying on the inside. We got work to do. I said we got work to do. I said we got work to do. Let it start today. Lift those hands before the Lord. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness, great kindness, great mercy. Father, those of our children have already been anointed. That oil that has been placed on their head. Father, we solidify that oil. We, we make that a transfer. Just like your power was transferred from the body of Elisha's bones. Father, keep them from pitfalls and ditches. Keep them, Lord God, from those that would destroy them and use them and manipulate them. Father, you know how to keep them from sexual sins. You know how to keep them, Lord God, from destroying their lives. And Father, not only do we pray for them, we pray for every parent, every single parent in here today those that do not have a father in the house we pray lord god that the church would step up and be the mentors and model what you have told us to model father we pray for the parents that you would give them strength and courage we pray for the church every minister every father every man in the church to recognize they have a responsibility and a job to do amen that extends far beyond their own homes we thank you in advance for doing it in Jesus name come on and put those hands together and give God some glory give him some praise give him some honor amen now if you're here and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ you don't need to wait any longer if you're listening to me you don't know the Lord today is your day to get a personal experience with him personal experience he wants to live inside of you <laughs> he wants to be the treasure in these earthen vo these vessels God wants to live inside of you what an invitation that the God that created everything want to dwell inside of you you can have that today you can have this have that today now some of y'all are making your way back to the Lord and you catch him back on fire even as I'm speaking now, get all the way back into it. It's too much at stake. Your life, children's lives, grandchildren's lives, it is so much at stake right now that we don't have time to play right now. So I admonish you, if you don't know Jesus, get to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection. What do you mean? How do I do that, Pastor? The power of his resurrection. Well, be buried with him in the name of Jesus Christ. Be baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Symbolic, symbolizing to be buried in his resurrection. In his name. And the God of glory will fear you with the power of the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance. You can have that today. Contact us. Contact us. Make your way to the house of the Lord. God is good to us. I don't know what, how we're going to direct him. Amen. Got a loss here for you. All right, praise the Lord, everybody. <clears throat> Outside, we have school supplies, 
backpacks, um, hot dogs, chips and drinks, I think. When you go out, Sister Brittany uh, Laster will be out and she will kind of direct you around. Please be mindful of your neighbor. Uh, some surveys we need to sign. Also downstairs, they will be cutting hair, I think, downstairs. We got a few people, so if you need a haircut, everything is free. Uh, just wanted to thank also the AEA, past and first lady Stewart, and the Young People's Department for their labor of love and putting this on. And to everyone who has donated, we're still taking donations because we just don't want this to be a one-time event because some need school supplies all year long. So we want to make sure we make that available. So remember your neighbor as you go out and get what you need. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. My name is Frank Stewart. I'm the pastor of Acts Ministries in Conway and also in North Little Rock. We also have an outreach on John Barrow where we partnership with the city and other ministries there. I want to invite you to partner with us in this ministry. I want to invite you to share with us in propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many things that we're doing and we're going to continue to do. We have a vision in mind on how to be a blessing to the community, communities that we're in. So we're asking you to be a partner with us. I believe that God will reward you and he will multiply you. So join us in the Acts Ministry in sponsoring not only this broadcast, but what we're doing in the great city of Little Rock, North Little Rock, and also Conway. God bless you. The Axe Ministries is located at 1423 Ingram in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock. Call 501-329-2055 or go to axeministriesonline.org for more information. We would love you to partner with our ministry. Please go to our website, axeministriesonline.org and find out how you can partner with us. For your gifts, please click on the Donate Online button or text the amount you wish to give to 501 302 4242.